Hello, my name is Lori Fox and with me is Sean Plummer. Today at SIGUX 2021, we're going to talk with you about leading diverse teams during transitions to remote work. Give you a little bit of background about Sean and me. We both work for the State University of New York at Geneseo. We're part of the SUNY system. We are a public liberal arts college in Western New York of approximately 4,500 students and 1,000 faculty and staff. I'm the Director of Educational Technology for CIT, and I also have a role in our Center for Digital Learning, which is a new initiative. I'm the Assistant Director of Online Learning. I also lead a team of six staff, which includes instructional designers, accessibility specialists, and classroom technologists. Sean is the Director of Systems and Identity and Access Management for CIT. He leads a team of two sysadmins. Sean and I frequently collaborate on projects together, and we have very similar leadership styles and values. The things that are important to us are collaboration, diversity, empathy, and fun. So as we share our story with you about remote work during the pandemic and returning to work and leading our teams, keep those ideas in mind. A year ago, AKA 1st March, March 2020, in the uh, middle of March, we received a telecommuting order from New York State, ordering us to work from home for the next two weeks, as the state and the nation was learning how to deal with this new virus. Our university historically did not have provisions for working from home. A new policy, just a few months old, permitted occasional work from home with advanced permission from your supervisor and a plan for what you were going to work on at home. That policy was leveraged by people who maybe needed to be home for a delivery or an appointment or had a project they were working on where they really needed to focus. In short, we did not have people on our staff for whom work from home was normal. In March, when we first started working from home, we would produce daily reports from our ticketing system to show that our staff were working. It was a whirlwind. We were training faculty how to teach remotely. We were establishing phone service that would reach people's homes and their cell phones, teaching people how to create video meetings, procuring and implementing Zoom, and providing support to a diverse community. It was crazy. So in the April to August timeframe, people started to adjust from the um, crisis mode that they might've been in when we first started to work remotely, uh, started to adapt to the new, um, the new work from home requirements, um, realized that it wouldn't just be two weeks or three weeks or four weeks that we were home. Um, people started to, to make changes. Um, our work from home channel in Slack was more uh, active. People would talk about setting up their home office, what they needed for monitors, desks, things like that. Um, a lot of information was shared in many uh, venues, the SIGUX Slack channel as well. Um, and so people started to adapt. We started to share what was working for us, what wasn't. Um, new routines were forming. Uh, people adjusting to uh, child care needs at home, the uh, how to have a productive day when your office is now in the middle of everything that's happening in your house. Um, and so uh, we provided a lot of assistance with that, Lori and I, uh, for our staff and flexibility. Some people started, uh, started their day earlier and ended earlier because that would work for them or started later and worked later. Um, we also had to struggle with the work balance when your work and home are the same thing. If your office is only a few steps from your um, leisure place, it 
it becomes problematic sometimes to disconnect from work in the evenings. And so that, that was definitely a challenge for us and our teams to adapt to. Um, we also, uh, Lori's team I know, um, had originally met every day to stay connected. And um, in an effort to lower the number of meetings people had to go to, uh, Lori went to an every other day um, coffee with her staff in the morning and they um, really missed the connection of every day and, and they've returned to that now. Um, Lori's team also maintains a, a page in our wiki that everyone finds quite entertaining where they share their status for the day in a funny um, image or a meme for the day that uh, I think we all enjoy following. So we've just changed some routines and added some ways to stay connected that have been pretty important to our teams. Um, my team already primarily communicated via Slack, even though our offices were right next to each other. So we were pretty well um, adapted to a more text-based form of communication. Uh, and we also found that uh, for our projects, we were when we first moved home, it was all about triage and dealing with all the immediate work that needed to be done to support work from home for the campus. Uh, and we had so many things we said, well, when we get back to campus, we'll deal with that. And as the time stretched on, those projects became more important and it became more of how do we move these projects forward when we are working from home. Um, and our MFA implementation was one of those projects that um, was supposed to happen right as we moved home. So we put it on pause to not overburden people, but then ultimately ended up implementing in the um, April and May timeframes. So um, we just had to adapt to that, found that, that um, better project management principles served us well there and ensuring that people knew what needed to be done um, and, and that that work was, the requirements were clear and, and follow-up was, was taking place even when we didn't have that ability to check in as often. So here we are in the new normal. This is the academic year 2020-2021. Some of our classes have returned to face-to-face, -to -face, physical distancing, masked. So part of my staff actually returned to campus. I have about a third of my staff on campus every day. We have maintained our daily interactions through Zoom and Slack. We've maintained our connectedness. And I've actually found in the last year that my staff works together better than ever before. We learn who everybody's pets are and their children, and you start to care for your colleagues as people. And fortunately, everyone in our department has stayed healthy. So we have not had to deal with any absences due to illness. I mentioned early on that Sean and I like fun. And our department has scheduled and hosted game breaks, uh, trivia contests. We've actually done happy hours where we encourage one of our more outgoing colleagues to be the host. And our boss has done a mindfulness series um, on Wednesdays during February to, to bring our department together and to give people a chance to um, blow off steam. Those have been fantastic. The new normal is difficult. We haven't been on any vacations. We're not traveling. We have less professional development. And when we do have professional development, it's very hard to focus on it as chaos is happening around you. Our budgets have been slashed. And in reality, many of our staff sizes are smaller. So we're trying to maintain productivity and compassion during this time. Now it's a little bit of a spoiler. Maintaining productivity is not the most important thing. Although certainly I find I'm more productive at home when I'm not being interrupted by customers and colleagues and drop-ins getting distracted at work. We've had a huge increase in the number of meetings. We've talked a lot in our own department about shortening the length of meetings, using Google's speedy meeting, just to give people a chance for a break in between meetings. We've also seen a big decrease in the amount of steps that people take every day. February in our department, we have a wellness competition. It's pretty friendly. One of our colleagues on one workday had 480 steps. 
That's a new low for our department. So we're working to embrace remote work principles. And one of the things that Sean and I frequently do is share information with each other that we find about companies for which remote work is normal. Some of those companies we listed here, we unfortunately don't have time to explore those articles, but you can look into Doist or Slack, the company, the wire cutter offers many articles and even your own SIGUX colleagues in the remote work Slack channel have been a great resource to talk about issues, benefits, drawbacks to this time of working from home. So as we look ahead, um, we're seeing um, you know, a future of, of more hybrid work. Uh, a recent survey in Educause of, of CIOs said that over 85% of them were looking into more hybrid work scenarios uh, in the future once things return to whatever our new normal is. Um, so you think I think you can you can certainly rely on that as as a thing that you'll need to look into or that you'll need to figure out how to work into your daily um, work routines and your how to make that work on your teams. Uh, with hybrid work comes the discussion about meeting formats. If you have some people remote, some people on campus um, or in person, do you um, try and do hybrid meeting scenarios with smart meeting rooms or do you does everyone meet remotely even if they could meet in person so that everyone has an equitable experience for the meeting? Oftentimes, if you have some people in person and some remote, the, the remote people won't be as integrated into the meeting or part of the meeting as the, the in-person people. And that's something to keep in mind in our experience. We've found that if some people are remote, everyone should, should probably be meeting with the same tools um, and in the same format. Shared workspaces are something that our institution hasn't really discussed or had to talk about. Our space issues tend to be not a big problem for us, but some institutions pay a lot for their office spaces. And so the opportunity, if some people can work remote and they've proven that working remote is productive to repurpose those workspaces, some IT departments are seeing many of their people being asked to work from home on a more permanent basis or using hoteling or um, shared workspaces when they do need to come to campus or only coming to campus a few, you know, on a, a semi-regular basis. And so we have to think about all these things when we think, what does the return to work look like? And for our teams, we also need to keep in mind that just as there was a huge disruption in the um, spring of last year when everyone had to suddenly move home, um, while the return to work will be under different circumstances, it's still going to be disruptive to people as they readapt to a commute that they're no longer used to or have to rework all of their um, home routines and things like that to account for the uh, return to work and going to work for the day. Um, so we're going to have to address that and, and deal with that on our teams um, going forward. So just some things to keep in mind as we return to work and, and strategies we'll need to, to, to take into account. So thank you for listening to our story. We look forward to having discussion with you about your experiences in the SIGX 2021 session.